Hello, in this video, we are going to talk about semiconductors. And uh, the focus of this video is to introduce to you the type of semiconductors, uh, what are their electronic structure, and how do we make semiconductors. This is especially important to you if you have, uh, if you didn't take chemistry as a subject in your A-levels, or if you just need a bit of a refresher. But first, before we go into what a semiconductor, the types of semiconductor is, or what a semiconductor is, we kind of like need to remind ourselves what a conductor is. Okay, so I think the focus uh, that is important here is to understand what is a charge carrier. Because when it comes to conductor, conductors are carrying charge which causes current flow. Think about what you have learned before in your AS, all right? So these free electrons for a conductor, because conductor are normally metals, so if you think about chemistry, right, there these are normally group one, two, and three. Okay, because they have one valence electron, two valence electron, or three valence electron, these electrons are free to move around. Okay, so these are this uh, charge carrier, free electrons will allow current to flow. All right. So if you look at the conductivity, which again we have covered in your AS, it will decrease with as temperature increases. Okay, conductivity will decrease. This is because when the particle or when the substance get hotter and hotter, you get more and more vibration. So it's harder for the electron to move. All right. There is more about this in uh, chapter twenty five in quantum theory. So we will KIV keep in view until chapter 25, where we talk about band theory and conduction. Next, we're going to look at what a semiconductor is. So a semiconductor's a resistance is in between a conductor and the insulator. And semiconductor uh, in chemistry, this is group 4 and 5. 6 is a not sure kind of thing. Okay, so the charge carrier can be free electrons or holes. So it depends on the type of semiconductor. And this one increases under two conditions. Either you add light or you increase temperature or you add some impurities. This adding of impurities is called doping. So dope, right? Okay, so normally when you hear uh, the term doping, let's say for example, you're playing a sport at Olympic level and we do drug tests for doping. Doping here means there's added substances inside the bloodstream of the athlete. It shouldn't happen in the first place. But in this case, doping here means we put some impurities inside your semiconductor. So the semiconductor is where we'll focus now. Before we move into uh, important topics like Hall effect in chapter 23 and... Okay, so you need to know this in chapter 23 for Hall effect and chapter 25 for band theory. Right, so when you think about um, this idea, right, especially whether how we can uh, increase the conductivity or allow current to flow better, you can see that there are a few options. So option one and option two, again, we will cover more in band theory, is what allows uh, the electrons to have more energy, okay? And today we're going to focus on doping. All right, what exactly is doping and how, is it how does it happen? And to round off your understanding of materials, we can also classify some other materials as insulator. So basically they do not carry charge or the electrons cannot move. So there's a, a few or no free electrons, okay? And it's not affected by temperature because the electrons are you just don't move. Lah. They're not, they don't have enough energy to move. Whereas for a semiconductor, this is a special one. It will conduct better if you give the electrons more energy. So it's like the electron will be really lazy like that. Okay, but today we're going to focus on doping. What exactly is doping? So if you look at the notes here, doping is a process of adding small impurities into the crystalline lattice of the semiconductor to increase the conductivity. So we are going to add small amount of impurities okay so impurities of meaning you have a pure let's say you have a pure sample of silicon or germanium okay so this silicon and germanium right are normally group four so if you think about your valence electron group four means you have four electron on the outermost shell 
all right? And then they will both undergo doping. But how you dope them will decide what type of semiconductor it is. For example, if you do P-type semiconductor, the way you would dope it is you will take a group 3 element such as boron, gallium, aluminium. So the doping is the impurities that we add is group 3. Okay, so what happens when you add a group 3 element to the structure? Let me zoom in. So if you look at this structure, right, you can see the silicons, it has this uh, valence electron of 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So the bond happens with a neighboring silica. 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, so you can see actually more or less they are not, I mean, it's not the most stable configuration, but they are okay. But if you take an acceptor atom, or basically this is the doped impurity that you add inside. And this one is group 3. So group 3 is missing one electron. You see here there's empty space here. And this missing electron leaves a hole in my heart. No, like leaves a hole. My missing student leaves a hole in my heart. Okay, so the missing electron leaves a hole inside the lattice structure. Lattice structure means the uniform arrangement. Okay, so if you don't take chemistry, you're wondering what is lattice, lattice. Huh? Lattice is uniform arrangement. Okay, so the silicons, they will uni arrange themselves uniformly this way. But if I put an imposter among us here, ha. Huh, this imposter has one missing electron. Sorry, one missing electron becomes a hole. And do you know how this helps uh, the semiconductor increase its conductivity or carry charge better? Well, I'm glad you asked because this will happen if, let's say, there's this electron and it goes like, A hey, hole, oh, hello, it's me, you are empty. I want to mm, join here. Okay, so this electron the neighboring electron will jump into this hole and leaving a hole behind. Meaning another neighboring electron here, because this lattice structure is many, many, many silica atoms, will begin to jump into here. Wow. So you can see the electrons will begin to flow. Okay, so the hole will move backwards, but the electron will move forward. So I'll put here, here is the movement of the hole. And no, wait, here is the movement of the electron. My bad. And the hole will move in the opposite direction. Okay. So because we have more holes, so it's not just, we don't just put one group three impurity. La. We put a certain percentage. Okay. Maybe one or two percent. So when we put in that hole, when we put in uh, the, elect the group 3 element and create that hole, that hole becomes your majority charge carrier. Because it looks like the hole is moving backwards. When this hole becomes your majority charge carrier and hole has a positive charge because it's an absence of an electron one. So becomes positive charge. La. That's why we call this the P-type semiconductor. The P here is for positive. All right. So in this case, the way we allow the electrons to be more willing to move is to make many, many holes and allow the holes to be your positive charge carrier. Okay, your majority charge carrier. What about N-type? I think you can guess already. For N-type semiconductor, our donor atom, so you see, uh, this one we call an acceptor atom because it accepts another electron. Right here for you. Lah. Okay, so this acceptor here, it accepts electron. Whereas for this one, this impurity is a donor atom because it is group 5 and it donates the extra fifth electron. This is group 5. And you can see this is the extra electron. Whee! So this extra electron is like, hmm, hmm, I can go anywhere I want because I have high energy. I can jump, 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 jump. So in this case, this free electron becomes your majority charge carrier. 
And because the electron is negatively charged, this is why this is called the n-type semiconductor. This n here is for the negative charge. All right. So what you need to know, basically, is that different types of uh, semiconductor will have different doping. Okay, so for example, if you're talking about the n-type, the majority charge carrier, we yes, we still have some hold, but we care about the majority. So the majority is electron for n-type. Majority charge carrier is the electron. For p-type, majority charge carrier is the hole. Okay, and in order to create p-type, we will add group 3. To create n-type, we will add group 5 elements. All right. And the type here, again, trivalent and pentavalent. Penta is 5, tri is 3. The majority charge carrier is the hole uh, for the p-type and the electron for the n-type. And sure, of course, we have some minority charge carriers there because we cannot control every single electrons, okay, and how they move. But what we care about is the majority. So if you're wondering how current will flow, then... Uh, Here's an example. So if let's say I put a p-type semiconductor here and I connect it to a power supply like this, one side will be high potential. Okay, the positive terminal side here is high potential. So I'm just going to call this high V. All right. And here will be low potential. Okay, low V because it's connected to the negative terminal here. So... The positively charged hole, all our holes here are positively charged. So all positive. Huh? And you can see that there are many, many holes. And all these holes, because they are positively charged, they are positively charged because the electron is absent. Okay, so the positively charged holes will all drift from high potential to low potential. This allows current to flow. So the direction of your eye is like this, no? Because the positive charge is flowing also in the same direction. Okay, but of course you can see that number two, there are some uh, minority charge carrier of electrons, but they are not, not that important. In this case, the one that carries most of the charge is the positive. And in fact, because the electron is flowing in the opposite direction, it still, go, it still follows the direction of current flow. So it's okay. All right, so you can actually see the electron will go out here, come in, fill in the hole, fill in the hole, the hole move backwards. So if you are pretty good at visualizing, right, it's a bit like the student enter the classroom on this side. So the students are the electrons, they enter the classroom at this side. They sit inside the first row that is closest to the entrance. And then they see the second row got placed, so they will jump into the second row leaving the first row empty for the new electrons to come in. When they jump until the final row, they will exit and go to the positive terminal. So you can see the hole will move backwards as the electron move forward. But the main takeaway is still holes are the majority charge carriers. Okay, let's look at the current flow for the n-type semiconductor where electrons are the majority charge carrier. So once again, we are connecting this to the same terminal, but you can see your electrons are the majority charge carriers and they are all moving and they are the majority. Lah. They are moving in the opposite direction with current flow. So this is the direction of current flow. The electrons are following opposite. Okay, and of course we have some holes, but holes will also follow the direction of current flow. So the electrons will always go from high low potential to high potential because it's negatively charged. Okay, or you can say the electron is attracted to the positive plate. Lah. Okay, so what did we learn today? We learned that there are two types of semiconductors depending on what impurities we add on it. If we add a group three impurity, that means there are many, many holes inside because it's supposed to be four. So that hole becomes your majority charge carrier. And because hole is absence of electron, so it's a p-type semiconductor. The second type is n-type semiconductor. We add a group 5 element inside.
which means the group 5 will have four electrons to bond with the silicon and one, there's just one electron that is free to move around. Okay, you know why I have to have four and four or not? Because you get octet configuration. It is the most stable form possible for silicon. This is a covalent bond. So if you do more chemistry, you will know what I'm talking about. Covalent bond. This is a stable configuration for silicon. If I introduce a group five, the group five will have extra electron can carry charge for you. N-type semiconductor. Majority charge carrier is negative charge. P-type semiconductor, majority charge carrier is positive charge. All right, so that's all you need to know so far, besides the very, very basic foundation idea of what's a conductor, is semiconductor and insulator. Lah. All right, so that's it for a brief recap for semiconductors. I'll see you in the next video, whichever you're watching. Bye-bye.